Hey, what's up guys, Brandon Lee. And today's video is one that I have been wanting to do for quite some time. And it's talking about something I'm very passionate about and that is automation. We're going to focus on a tool known as HashiCorp Packer. Packer allows us as IT ops or DevOps engineers to build out machine images in a fully automated way. So in our video today, we're going to look at a start to finish process of building out a VMware vSphere virtual machine, converting that virtual machine to a vSphere template and performing other configuration operations on that VM. So stick around, we're going to dive headfirst into this advanced topic. So the first step to getting started using Packer is very simple. It's to download Packer. Now HashiCorp makes this very easy as you simply browse to packer.io slash downloads and you're going to see the download packer page now at this point all you do is pick the operating system that you want to download packer for whether it's mac os windows or linux so once you download the packer zip file you simply extract that zip file and it's a self-contained executable what i like to do is copy that Packer executable to a directory that I want to work with and then add that directory to your path statement. So for instance, I can now go to a command prompt, whether that's PowerShell or the traditional command prompt and type in Packer and the executable executes as expected. Now what we need to do is to create the files that Packer needs to perform the automated build process. So I just have a folder on my administrative workstation where I'm working out of to create the files and it's where I will have Packer look to to perform the build process. At a bare minimum, the files that we need for a Windows build process using Packer uh, include the two files you see at the bottom of this folder, uh, vars win2022.json file. Now, the name of that file is not significant. We could name that anything but you want to name it something intuitive so you know that this is your variables file that you want to pass in uh, sensitive credentials uh, other variables that you may want to reference in your packer build json file now the packer build file is the main file that packer uses to know how to perform the build process and it is the windows server 2022 json file that you see at the very bottom so I'm going to open up Notepad++ and just take you through. It's going to seem a little bit busy, maybe even complex or complicated, but it's really not as bad as it seems. And in the variables file, uh, it's a JSON file. And what it actually is, is just a few variables uh, that describe our vSphere server, the user we want to use to connect, uh, template name, folder, data center name, compute cluster, we have a single host reference in there as well, a vSphere port group name for networking purposes, uh, the data store, a Windows admin password that we're going to store as a variable as well, and that will be used as part of the build process of this Windows machine. Uh, we can configure the CPU number, as you can see, the memory size, the disk size, and then also a critical part of this variables file is the ISO path. The ISO path is going to point to the vSphere data store where we actually want Packer to pull the ISO from. When Packer goes to build the Windows Server 2022 machine, it will look to the vSAN data store and this exact ISO image as it exists in the vSAN data store in the folder called ISO. So I've literally copied the windows.iso file from the VM images folder on a host that was in the vSphere cluster. So all you need to do is just grab that out of the VM images folder and copy that to the same data store. In the Windows Server 2022 JSON file, I have the structure of the Packer build process. Now, a lot of this is uh, syntax that uh, is specific to HashiCorp uh, Packer, the HCL language, uh, but 
it's pretty intuitive and fairly human readable. So as we parse through, we can actually see what the Packer build is, is going to do, where it's pulling variables from. And we'll actually see at the very bottom of this, uh, we'll see variables such as a CPU number, disk size. A lot of those should be familiar from the variables that we know that we have in existence in our variables file. One thing I want to point out is the floppy files. One of the other files that is necessary and critical to perform this automated installation of Windows Server 2022 is the unattend.xml file. This is a standard unattend.xml file that I have created in a folder called setup. Under the setup folder, uh, you will see the auto unattend.xml file. That is a standard answer file that you can have built if you uh, download the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit. It will actually build one of these unattend files uh, for you. I also have a custom setup.ps1 script that has some PowerShell code in it that I use to kick off Windows updates. I actually uh, do a get Windows updates, updates modules in the PowerShell gallery. Um, I can use that to, as Packer is building, it can actually automatically pull the latest Windows updates. Part of the build process for Windows Server 2022 is to install VMware tools. That is happening via a file that is called, in that unattend file, called vmtools.command. Now, in the auto unattend uh, file, it's under the specialized key. And in the specialized key, we can see that we actually have this called vmtools.cmd. Uh, Using that file, uh, we can install VMware Tools as the Windows Server 2022 virtual machine is booted and the customization uh, actually finishes. A lot of files, it may seem a bit intimidating to put this all together. Uh, it's going to make a lot more sense. And again, I'm going to have links to my GitHub repository so you can pull down these files, customize those as a starting point and play around in your home lab. Okay guys, so now that we have the files in place, let's actually run the packer build command so we can get an idea of how this process works. We're going to just issue the packer command to make sure that we can actually get to the packer command. Uh, it's in our path statement correctly which it is, we can see all the parameters return. So to run the packer build command, we're just going to type in packer build dash var dash file, and we're going to point it to the variables file. Uh, so I went through and renamed just to make sure that everything's a bit more intuitive. So variables.json is the variables file. And then we literally just uh, point it to the packer build JSON file for Windows Server 2022. So we just hit the enter command. So I have pulled up the virtual machine through a vSphere remote console just to show you guys what's happening. Uh, as we noted earlier, Packer is enumerating through. It's, it has mounted the boot media. It is uh, working its way through the auto unattend file. And as you can see, it is uh, rolling through the installation of Windows Server 2022. Now we are a few more minutes into the automated Packer build installation of Windows Server 2022. And I wanted to show you guys uh, where things are currently. This virtual machine is actually running a couple of PowerShell commands that I had in that customized uh, PowerShell script. Packer is now saying it's waiting for WinRM to become available. It's going to finalize a few things and then it's going to successfully shut that machine down. And then the final part of the process will be converting the virtual machine to a vSphere template. The Packer build has completed successfully. In the command line window, we actually get the notification of the build being successful. It completed after 29 minutes and 18 seconds, which is not too bad considering the fact that this was running in a nested environment in my home lab, plus we installed uh, all the Windows updates that were available. Fully automated Windows Server virtual machine templates in just a few minutes using Packer. It is an awesome tool. I use it all the time and it is a great way to introduce DevOps processes even in your home lab environment, also in production environment. Well, I'm Brandon Lee and I hope you've enjoyed this content, a little bit of a deeper dive into some DevOps automation tools. 
And please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys soon.